Hello YouTube! I know it's been quite a while since I last posted on here, uh, but I plan on picking things back up and putting out a lot more content since I have quite a bit saved to share on here. But let's dive in with the process of this piece. And we of course start out in the phase of concept sketches. <laughs> This was difficult because I didn't have very many reference images to lean on for the pose, but after many, many sketches, even before the ones you see now, I was finally able to piece something together. Um, you can also see some of my struggle because this first background that you can see I'm doing now, um, <laughs> yeah, that one didn't work. So I ended up scrapping that one and moving on to a different angle. But of course, the ideas don't come out of thin air. <laughs> so here's a little bit of background about this piece. Uh, so this is a commission that I received to paint a friend's main character from the game Final Fantasy XIV. And did you know that the critically acclaimed MMORPG Final Fantasy XIV Online has a free trial and includes the entirety of A Realm Reborn and the award-winning Heaven's Word expansion up to level 60 with no restrictions on playtime? Sign up and enjoy every day today! Hey, <laughs> popular memes aside, um, I also play the game and figured if I was going to do the commission, I was going to go all out for it. So I set up a time for us to meet within the game, and I was able to get a good grasp of who their character is. You know, just asking them questions about their personality. Um, and then I also got some good reference pictures of their character's preferred weapon and outfit. And as a, another part of the research phase, I had them take me to their character's favorite place within the game as well, which of course inspired the background. And after getting some nice screen caps there, I was finally ready to piece it all together. Now, I had done some digital illustrations in the past, but it mainly was on my Wacom and PC setup. And the Wacom tablet that I had is, or that I have, is just an Intuos Pro, which isn't really top of the line. If you're not familiar with it, uh, you have to watch the screen as you draw. And it doesn't have the screen on the drawing surface. So after scoring a free iPad, um, all I had to do was get an Apple Pencil and then I was able to get to work on working within Procreate, which has been really, really nice. Uh, just being able to draw on the actual surface uh, that you can see is such a godsend, it's such a boon. Thank you, technology. And I had known that I wanted to do a really big illustration, so this was the perfect commission to work on this on. And another huge bonus is that within Procreate, it of course records your illustrations. So while Procreate says that this took 41 hours for me to do, <laughs> that doesn't take into account um, hours of pre-sketching or even just the time where your pencil is not touching the screen. <laughs> so I want to say this probably took more around 50 to 60 hours. But as you can see, I just keep working and working through the sketches, um, which isn't something that I'm used to doing either. I, I'm used to doing kind of just one base sketch and then doing my best to put in the line work and kind of skip a whole bunch of phases and quickly put out some art. But with this one, I... Whew, spent a lot of time working on perspective and anatomy and the pose and basically everything having been conceptualized in my brain and working through making sure it all worked out on paper, of course. <laughs> And I think you can mainly see the perspective struggle best here <laughs> in this portion where I'm really working on the background and this stained glass mirror uh, area. 
which I was actually very excited to work on just because stained glass windows mean a lot of colorful light and I was already getting really excited about uh, how the light and the color were going to play with the character and ah, <laughs> so so exciting to think about. But looking back on the illustration and having worked within Procreate a little bit longer, now I've realized that the perspective could have been a lot easier to figure out had I just used the guidelines that they have within the program. <laughs> Um, so as far as this goes, I just ended up eyeballing it and it didn't turn out bad. So I ended up feeling all right about it. Now bear with me as far as video editing goes. I haven't done this in quite a while. Uh, I've mainly been doing streaming on Twitch, so I am not as skilled in the video editing universe. <laughs> so I'm going to try and make sure that the camera pans and moves along with my brush strokes and things like that so that you guys can more easily focus on where it is I'm drawing. But of course, if you guys have any comments uh, on how this is, or if you have any movement sickness that it incurs due to the movement, just let me know and I'll try to adjust the video settings to you guys' liking. But yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with how I drew in her facial expression here. Uh, mainly because she's so fierce, you know, she's in the middle of battle. I had this concept of her like jumping off of this ledge in front of the stained glass window in the midst or, or about to like swing her uh, scythe down on you. <laughs> and I just thought it was such a cool and, and fierce concept and I'm glad to have that reflected in her facial expressions to really try and convey those emotions as well. Now of course bringing the conversation back to the critically acclaimed MMORPG Final Fantasy XIV Online. <laughs> I was really stoked about this character's class because they are a reaper, they use scythes as weapons. Scythes are just really, really cool. <laughs> and uh, when I was younger, I was in karate and for weapons training, for weapons classes, we had different ones, of course, you've got nunchuck, size, tonfas, things like that. But there's also the bow. And the scythe most reminds me of the bow as a weapon. And honestly, I feel like some of my experience with weapons like that helped me, helped inform the pose. Because you can see right here as I'm working on the hand, I was trying to put in a thumb, <laughs> but then when I went back and thought about it realistically, I was like, that the thumb would not be there. The scythe would just fall out of her hand <laughs> and that's not practical. But yeah, one of the things I enjoy about watching the playback most is just seeing the layers <laughs> and the depth that I went to for all of the details. And you can see the base rough sketch and whew, going in over that, and then over that, and then over that, <laughs> until it turns into this beautiful, cohesive piece right in front of your eyes. And it's just so nice to watch. I'm really glad Procreate has this feature so that I don't have to set up a camera and record it. I most recently did a watercolor Umbreon, a shiny Umbreon, and I set up my camera to record, but 
the will just drained out of my body and I felt like if I were to record it, I wouldn't be able to get it done quick enough and recording can also put some unnecessary pressure on working through your art, right? <laughs> So at least in Procreate, you don't have to focus so much on setting up a camera to record. And I found that to be freeing in a way. <laughs> but I did want to do a quick plug for the music. Uh, it's all done by Lacey Johnson. Definitely go check her out. And all of the tracks on here are from her Final Fantasy Lo-Fi album. So be sure to check it out if you're really enjoying the vibes. But I know this is quite a long speed painting. So I'm going to leave you guys here now for a bit just to chill out and watch the coloring phase now. And I'll see you guys in a bit.
Hi, I just thought I would pop in and explain this part where I'm painting in a gray area behind the character uh, and that's just to be a buffer in between the character and the background so that the background doesn't shine through any transparent areas on the character. And then we move on to the coloring. So what I like to do is put the layer on overlay and then bring in the colors so that I can still have the light and shadows that I painted in with in black and white, of course. And I know a lot of people don't use this kind of process of black and white first and then colors, but it really just helps me because sometimes I struggle with contrast and making sure that I have the darkest darks and brightest brights all in the same painting, which is definitely something I continue to work on and I need to do some more studies in just color so that I can embrace that a bit more and just be a bit more comfortable going in with color rather than starting out in black and white. Winding down with some touch-ups, fixing colors in certain areas, uh, painting in the leather piece to be darker, making sure everything really fits together. And what I really, really enjoy about this phase is finally painting in the colored light. <laughs> painting in the colored light on the character is just so much fun, adding in the the different lights from all the different little window pieces. And I really wish that I had the footage from when I exported this to Photoshop so that I could show you guys how I did the blur on the window in the background. Uh, but you'll see that in the final piece. Thank you guys so, so very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed my talk through of the process. And of course, as any YouTuber must say, don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> but wherever you are in the world, morning, evening, or afternoon, I hope you have a lovely, lovely rest of your day. Bye.